I'm Janis. I'm uh, working at Mozilla, as you probably see. And search and find. Um, it's a little bit of a rake topic, but uh, specifically I'm going to talk about the product I'm um, working on, which is MVN. Um, who knows what MVN is? Okay, like one search or so. That's great. That's um, just quick about me. That's my picture there. Um, <laughs> I'm a software developer myself. I have a very strong background in open source development. Uh, I'm a Django core developer, Python enthusiast, and you know, all blah blah blah. It's, I'm very much you know, having a background in open source and wrote lots of documentation uh, on my own. You know, I'm probably responsible for a big chunk of Django core development, uh, Django, uh, Django documentation, so that's my fault in many things. That said, today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, my work at MDN as a Brazilian, basically. So, what is MDN? Um, no, it's a developer network. It's more or less a website. It's um, it's about a, a website that documents a various you know, a bunch of topics. First of all, of course, the web platform that Mozilla is very much keen to do a, a document. Uh, we are spearheading many of those standards, such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, but also, there are other couple uh, a couple of other topics that we uh, document there, which is for um, for example the Firefox desktop app. Of course, that's our main of um, product, but also there is the Firefox for Android, which we document there, where, for example, the developers come to our site, um, look for information about how to develop uh, extensions for that or you know, other things. And of course, our uh, latest um, product, Firefox OS. Um, today, though, I want to show you what, what actually means for us as a um, community platform to actually write all those um, write documentation for all those topics, which was so uh, vastly different, having such a different audience. Um, so just to give a couple of numbers, we have uh, like six uh, staff writers, more or less. We have, kind of have to cut the one and a half sometimes. Um, <laughs> and we have, of course, uh, six staff developers, which is front end and web uh, and back end uh, web developers. Uh, my, myself um, included, of course, and I'm a back end developer. Um, we have on the site 900 live demos. That means that when a developer uh, interested in one of those technologies comes to our site, they can upload a snippet of code to kind of showcase a specific technology. But we also have, um, as you can see, um, you know, because of you know, those many topics that we cover on the site, uh, a huge number of page views per month, like 9 million page views. That's, that's, that's a lot um, compared to um, like for example, my own uh, documentations for my own software, for example. Um, the reason for that, of course, is that we have so many documents in itself. It's all wiki-based, so it means that it can be edited and created and um, no, deleted even by uh, all of you. It's good. You can just come and sign up. And, you know, it's like media, but just for developers, more or less. Um, uh, Wikipedia, I mean. Um, and that's where kind of I want to show that we have such a um, drastic difference in the number of people that are actually doing that. We have like 12 people working on it full time, like being paid for it. And we have like, 14,000 people actually having done edits on the site. It's a, that's a huge challenge for the software side. You know, how to develop that to make sure that um, we can handle you know, that, that many changes without having backing like uh, such as Wikipedia. So what do we what do we do? I mean, basically, what do I do in everyday development? Uh, to write a software called Kuma. It's uh, Django based, of course. That's why I'm working there. Um, it's also open source software, so you can download it and you know run it on your own server. Um, it's um, it provides a public you know, UI to edit and create pages, as I mentioned, um, and it's available on GitHub. So we are our base uh, um, or not only our content, uh, but also on uh, our code. Um, you know, on your contribution. That's um, a key part of how we do things at Mozilla, after all. And one thing that is kind of um, the reason why we wrote that ourselves, um, uh, or one of the many reasons, to be honest, uh, is a 
own scripting language that we embedded in that uh, software, which is called Kuma Script. It allows us to programmatically actually change the content of some pages depending on like, certain factors, for example, data that we fetch from other sites and stuff like that. So technically, um, it's a quite a big project, um, but it's also required. Um, so let me show you now what I actually what was there before Kuma existed. Let's go back like 12 years, 14 years, whatever. It was definitely like AOL. It was a static uh, page-based uh, site. It was still, uh, maintained at AOL when basically Mozilla didn't exist. Um, and it, um, as you can see here, for example, that was a um, rather simplistic site that uh, showcased a certain feature in JavaScript about regular expressions, which you know, doesn't really matter specifically, but it shows that you know, it's pretty boring and you know, not very nice to read. Uh, over time, of, uh, of course, AOL dropped the protocol on that, and uh, we were able to licen uh, license the, the content and move it over to our, to our site. And we actually did that based on uh, the very successful uh, MediaWiki platform, which is commonly used by Wikipedia, of course. So that's um, at, at the time was the Mozilla Developer Center, which is um, like a predecessor to what we have now at the end. Over the years, as you, as you can see, we migrated the content from platform to platform. Here is, for example, a uh, commercial tool called MyTouchDiki, which is a commercial wiki or was a commercial wiki. And for various reasons, I wasn't uh, at Mozilla at the time, so I don't know the more stories about it, to be honest. But uh, I hear that it was quite a mess, and um, we had to move forward. Um, we did a redesign on top of my touch lately, but it didn't work, uh, quite work out. Um, so we finally, in 2012, wrote our own. So that's where we basically are, technically. Um, and the interesting bit about it is that, as you can see, the, the content stayed the same, but we, you know, the layout and the, the presentation always tried to, be, you know, tried to be made better and you know, improved uh, on the previous version. So this is where we are right now. And as you can see, it's um, a lot more pleasant to read. You know, we want to engage the, uh, the audience in a way that you know, it fits our general um, you know, ideas of what, what, what web development should like or what website should look like. So it has a pleasant typography, for example, and stuff like that. Um, so, and you know, that iteration, uh, you, know, you see here, uh, document page, or deep, uh, page with, uh, on the left side, uh, um, uh, on the left, there we go. Um, on the left side there is a content bar for the, for the content for each side, and there's uh, some related links, of course, and here's uh, the main content for each of the wiki page. Nothing surprising to be honest, but um, behind the scenes there's lots of more. So let me talk a little bit about what actually uh, what the redesign that we did in 2013 entailed. Uh, here you see um, uh, the front page that we have um, nowadays. Um, we have a responsive design now, which means that given the fact that we have a, a huge number of our audience actually um, using mobile devices nowadays, I mean, we are doing that on our own anyways, uh, with Firefox OS. Um, we have to make sure that they are able to read that content, the same content, on um, any kind of resolution, any kind of um, you know, format, you know, whether it would be uh, widescreen or you know, not widescreen. So um, we redesigned it from scratch and made, made sure that it's readable and you know, easy to understand. That also meant that we revamped like, a whole bunch of um, uh, markup that was behind it. We also introduced uh, content zones, which are the colorful bits here in the bottom, um, which are uh, topical uh, main landing pages that uh, you know, each of those sub-audiences or those target groups can uh, you know, go to and figure out, you know, find out what they want to uh, know. And of course, and that's actually where I come in mostly. Um, I previously have done a lot of search development. Uh, we put a the search engine front and center. So not only on the on the front page with the with the input, uh, the search input, but we also made sure that the content that we already had of those thirty three thousand documents um, 
uh, are easy to, uh, uh, to navigate, easy to uh, search through, and actually provide the, the results that um, you know, people expect. You know, people expect the same quality of search results as on Google. And that's, um, that's quite a challenge with uh, constantly changing document base. So um, let me talk a little bit more in detail about this. Um, and that's because I want to show you how we make, uh, make sure that when you use a search, um, all the users are able to actually you know, uh, find the stuff that you're, they're looking for. Uh, so we moved away from a custom Google-based search, basically uh, something that was literally using Google's own index to show the results on the, on, on the search and previous search, and um, implemented an own um, system. Um, it's, you know, it's all full text search, and it uh, is able to use the, the multilingual content of, of the site, but also provides um, faceting and filters that allow uh, users to, the filters are here on the right side, allows the users to um, find the spe specific topics they are looking for. We have a couple of, fill of those filters. Um, right now, for example, we have uh, topics-based filters, we have skill-level-based filters, and of course, depending on what kind of document type, whether it would be a reference documentation or it's a tutorial, you also can uh, filter by uh, filter in the search results by that as well. Uh, the cool thing about uh, the filters um, is obviously also that you are able to dynamically change them depending on what um, we see as a, you know, the main usage. So for example, if we see a certain topic you know, suddenly have a very you know, uh, you know, public use, I mean, people are linking to it, and we see uh, rising stats on Google Analytics, then you can actually promote it, or we can uh, even add more of those uh, kind of filters to the search. That's all done with, a, with the admin interface that we here, uh, have here. That's the Django admin interface, um, but we use it for that as well. So, um, and that allows us to uh, actually react to the community uh, demands, so what they want to actually see in the search results. And, this is actually another uh, interesting bit, is that, that if we um, look at every of those search pages, we are able to provide uh, our users, for, especially given the fact that they're you know, developers on their own, um, to, to read those documents in an automatic way, in a programmatic way. So uh, each of those page, uh, pages that the search results are shown on are, can actually also be um, viewed as JSON, as a, as a, you know, as a standardized format. Um, you literally just append that .json at the end of the URL to, to get it. Um, and it all includes all the data that we have internally, you know, inside of our database as well. So you can easily you know, create your own UI, you can easily you know, use that data on your own uh, projects, even sub-projects. Uh, it's all you know, Creative Commons licensed, so you're very happy to share it with, with anyone. And it also means that we actually eat our own dog food. It's, um, we have a couple of new features in the search that if you, for example, come to, uh, come to a docking page from a search result page, um, the search navigator is shown, where we can skip very easily um, through the search results, to make sure that you, know, you, may, you know, may find um, the, the actual result that you were looking for um, without having to go, to go back to the search results in the first page. Um, so in other words, um, that is actually used uh, that actually uses the search API itself. And that's basically one of the first steps that we are going to do to make sure that um, you know, the, our users find the content um, the way they want. Another thing is the so-called uh, documentation status page. It's actually um, one of the products of Florian and my colleagues here, writing staff, um, that it, uh, you know, shows here in the, on the uh, right side um, uh, current status of what the documentation, uh, docu um, what the documents in the database uh, are up to. For example, whether they need some tags here, or whether there's an editorial review needed, and stuff like that. And behind the scenes, that actually uses KumaScript, the, the technology of the language that I mentioned earlier. Um, it dynamically fetches data from the data from the database and also from the search API, or I suppose so should be it soon. I don't know. Uh, um, to, to display that data. And that allows us to uh, make sure that you know, all our editors and all our community um, writers actually know what to work on first. That's a, that's a major, main issue here. 
Another thing that we are working on right now to improve the search uh, experience is to provide a so-called commanding query UI. It's, this is still a, a prototype, so it's not completely done in, in that sense, but uh, technically it works. So it's, it's, um, what, it, what it allows you to do is that on the front page, you can you know, select one of those filters that I mentioned before uh, to, uh, before you even start to search, uh, narrow down the search results. That gives you a quick access to the results, you know, quick access to the documents, and it should you know, reduce the time that you uh, need to take uh, when you know, looking for a document. Another thing, which um, is unfortunately a little bit small here, but um, Firefox includes a so-called web uh, developers toolbar um, that is um, basically uh, a feature of uh, Firefox to enable developers to see more about a page, you know, you know, interact with the page, and more or less uh, inspect it um, they, to make sure that their work is correct. And part of that is a so-called command line interface here as well. And the goal of the integration of the command line interface and the MDN is that you are easily, you know, uh, basically a couple of um, you know, keystrokes away from getting more information about um, a specific topic um, from the MDN, document uh, MDN documentation without actually having go to, uh, to go to the site. And that also uses the search API behind the scenes. So you see, um, we have a couple of steps planned here that allow our users to actually find the, the documents that they were looking for without actually using our prime user interface for it. And that's, I think, um, one of the you know, ways to um, you know, make sure that they actually you know, can use our stuff. It's, uh, we have all this great content, so how to get them to them. So what else? Um, right now we are basically considering uh, multiple options for, for how to improve uh, upon that as well. Uh, some of uh, which, of course, is every of our developers or our audience is using some kind of a code editor. So why not write block it, plugins to actually get that information from our database, um, for example, in their, in their editors uh, directly. So imagine, for example, be, uh, being able to select a bit of code, you know, press it, shortcut and then get the information about that specific uh, snippet that you select. Another thing is to provide a user profile search where you can actually interact through the um, through the MDN uh, contributor uh, users uh, for example writing messages to each other and stuff like that. And also um, the so-called docs.json integration which is a technique that Eric is working on specifically so you may actually know more about it. Uh, which is a um, uh, kind of a standard in progress that allows to, uh, to fetch data from other platforms to make search even more um, integrated with other platforms that have documents. Um, so you see, it's an ongoing process, but and, and we are eager to actually um, you know, share our content, and the search is one of those tools. Um, I'm super stoked to work on that because I think it will help uh, like a huge number of web developers to. Um, you know, to do their work better, um, and I'm yeah, looking forward to work, to work on that more. So that's it for now. Uh, any questions so far? How do I get a microphone? I'm just going to talk loud. Uh, I wanted to ask, how did you, who, how did you arrive at the the information architecture for like the tagging, like all of the topics. You say that some of them are by by level, some of them are by topic. Like like, uh, was there a special process that you used to to figure out those categories, um, or so, do you know anything about how they came to be? Um, that's probably a better question for the writing staff, to be honest. But uh, I know the technical background, and that's it's uh, it's a very good question. Um, Many of those tags stem from the fact that they are. Um, so no, let, let me let me go back basically to the history of MDN being um, this static page where you didn't have taxonomy or any other way of categorizing uh, content. And over time, the writing staff marked uh, the more important the, the pages with, with tags. And and one thing that I didn't mention, of course, um, that that's a good question um, in a sense, is that. Some of those filters are actually a combination of tags. In that sense, it allows us to, for example, um, you know, refine the results, uh, the, search, um, the search results 
by adding more tags or you know, speci specifying a, uh, like an or search. Um, in other words, uh, so some tags are like aliases for other, like some filters are aliases for a set of other filters. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, if you think about, um, I mean, again, I think it's probably a better idea, a question for for those guys, but. Um, in general, the filters are not something that you would consider a one-to-one -one relation to a tag specifically. Uh, for example, the skill level may, may be um, uh, something that uh, is based on the technology that is used, something like HTML that is um, a low level. But if you go back you know, very deep into, for example, uh, Firefox add-on development, that's uh, something where you know, a skill level is very hard to define as uh, three uh, kind of individual levels, uh, beginner, you know, mid and advanced. So um, it really depends on how you want to uh, discover uh, that, that content, and it also de depends on how the content is changing. So the filters that we have right now at the moment may actually not be possible to be applied in a, uh, like in a couple of months because the content has drastically changed. So um, that's why we want to have those dynamic filters, to be able to react to that without having to change the code. Fascinating. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? People that haven't asked questions should also ask questions, by the way. Um, but so I see the kind of, you call it search, but I feel like you're not actually doing as much search as just turning kind of the search box into a general interface to the documentation. Um, I don't really know if I have a question, but can you just kind of maybe comment a little bit more on, like it seems like you're using search and calling it search, but you're doing much more with it. Um, it's true. I mean, Basically, when we talk about search, we need to have the, uh, the idea of you know, looking at Google first, um, because that's kind of the, the dominant idea about uh, what search should be. But the simple fact is that we have much more data <coughs> in our database to uh, provide rich uh, results in that sense. So uh, the, the full text search, that, uh, that's what the term I would you know, use for the, the very classical Google-based search, uh, is just one facet of that. Um, we can. We have much more data. We have the user input. We have the, those tags. We have, uh, you know, the number of requests against the site. So we can. I mean, and that's that's right. We, we have a much more, um, yeah, a rich um, ability to actually provide the browsing experience for for our users. In that sense, the command and query UI that we're working on is just at the beginning of uh, allowing that uh, access to happen. Um, Personally, I think that's um, that's why we kind of stumbled over that because previously we only had the Google Play search, and now we realize, hey, we actually are able to allow our users a completely new way to uh, engage you know, our content. That's with any wiki, you know, you, you know the the Wikipedia trap of going you know, from link to link, and that's something that we don't want to do. I mean, we want to actually answer questions that uh, that people have. And it's, yeah. Search is one way to, to realize that. 